long-term assets, which are also known as fixed assets, are recorded at initial cost on the balance sheet. At the time a fixed asset is acquired, its cost does not immediately flow through to the income statement as an expense. Instead, the entire cost is treated as an asset and recorded on the balance sheet. Most fixed assets, however, are then expensed over time as the asset is used to produce revenue. This decline in usefulness over time is the process of depreciation. Depreciation represents the decline in the usefulness, functionality, and value of the asset and the resulting transfer of the cost to an expense account over the life of the asset. To properly depreciate an asset, the company must collect some vital information about the asset. First, it needs the asset's initial cost. The initial cost is the purchase price plus any cost associated with getting the asset ready for its intended purpose. Second, it needs the asset's expected useful life. The expected useful life is the number of years an asset is expected to remain in service. Third, it needs to know the residual value. The residual value is the anticipated value of a fixed asset at the end of its useful life. Residual value is also known as scrap value, salvage value, or trade-in value. When a fixed asset is depreciated, not the entire initial cost is depreciated, rather only the amount by which the initial cost exceeds the residual value. This is known as depreciable cost. An asset should never be depreciated below its residual value. There are three common depreciation methods, straight line, units of activity, and double declining balance. The straight line depreciation method provides a constant amount of depreciation expense over the life of a fixed asset. Of the three methods, straight line depreciation is used the most primarily because it is simple. Straight line depreciation equals initial cost minus residual value divided by expected useful life. Suppose that big truck company buys a new piece of equipment for $30,000 that is expected to have a useful life of seven years and will likely be worth $2,000 at the end of its life. If the asset is depreciated using the straight line method, the annual depreciation expense will be $4,000. Each time an asset is depreciated, regardless of the method used, the depreciation amount is recorded as an expense on the income statement, a debit, and the credit comes from an accumulated depreciation account, which is a contra-asset account used to reduce the carrying amount of the asset from the initial cost to an amount net of depreciation already taken. The units of activity method is a depreciation method that bases the depreciation expense not purely based on the number of years the asset will be in service, but based on how much the asset is expected to produce. Suppose that big truck company chooses to use the units of activity method for a new machine it just purchased. The machine costs $30,000 and is expected to have a residual value of $2,000. Since the initial cost of the machine is $30,000 and the estimated value at the end of its life is $2,000, the depreciable cost is $28,000. Suppose that, rather than estimating the life of the machine in terms of years, the company estimates that the machine will operate for 40,000 hours. Therefore, the company can calculate how much the machine depreciates for each hour it operates by dividing $28,000 by 40,000, which gives 70 cents per hour. Suppose that big truck company used the new machine for 3,000 hours this year. At 70 cents per hour, the machine will be depreciated $2,100. The double declining balance method is an accelerated depreciation method that is twice the straight line rate. Keep in mind that twice the straight line rate does not always mean twice the straight line amount, because the rate is a percentage, while the amount is a dollar figure. An accelerated depreciation method provides higher depreciation costs early in the life of an asset when repairs and maintenance are often low and lower depreciation in later years. Unlike other methods, the double declining balance method does not consider the residual value when computing depreciation. 
Computed double declining balance depreciation is a three-step process. First, the company calculates the straight line rate, which is one divided by the expected useful life. Second, the straight line rate is doubled. Third, the doubled rate is applied to the asset's book value. Note that we are using book value, not historical cost or depreciable cost. The residual value doesn't come into play until the final year. In the final year of depreciation, the amount of depreciation expense must be calculated based on bringing the book value of the asset to the residual value of the asset and not below. Suppose that big truck company buys a new piece of equipment for $30,000 that is expected to have a useful life of five years and will likely be worth $2,500 at the end of its life. The company uses the double declining method of depreciation. First, the company will determine the straight line rate, which is 20%. 20% represents how much of the asset's depreciable cost would be depreciated each year under the straight line method. The straight line rate is then multiplied by two. Third, the double declining rate of 40% is applied to the asset's book value. In year one, the book value is the same as the historical cost. However, in subsequent years, the book value will be the historical cost net of depreciation already taken. The company will then continue until the asset reaches its residual value, which acts as a floor amount, below which it cannot be depreciated. <laughs>